Now that we've pointed to the importance of discipleship in the life of a follower of Jesus Christ, the question must be asked, how does one become a disciple of Jesus Christ? Let me first debunk the myth that simply attending worship services in person or online doesn't produce a follower of Jesus Christ, any more than sitting in a gym during a basketball game makes you a basketball player. Discipleship results from several actions that make a person a learner of Jesus. First, a person must undergo the process we call regeneration. Regeneration means rebirth. Just like we have a physical birth that introduces us to this material world, we must undergo a spiritual rebirth that introduces us to the kingdom of God. According to John chapter three, verse three, we must go through a process of spiritual rebirth in which the Holy Spirit awakens us to a new life before God, after we have been cleansed from our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. Before we come to Christ, we are dead to God. Once we accept the redeeming work of God in Jesus Christ on the cross, the Holy Spirit makes us aware of God's power, person, and presence. It's like a second birth, but this time it happens as a, at a spiritual level. According to Romans chapter eight, our bodies don't change, but our consciousness of God at a spiritual level does. In short, we become new creations and are a part of God's kingdom. Secondly, as a part of this process, we choose to make Jesus the Lord of our lives. This suggests that we voluntarily give Jesus permission to be the master of our lives. Every facet of our lives gets placed under the submission of Jesus. We follow his commandments, and according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, we seek to carry out the will of our Heavenly Father. Thus, as those who desire to follow the will of God, we commit to learning what that will requires of our lives. Thirdly, to become disciples, we must receive the teachings of Jesus Christ. Our primary way of receiving the teachings of Christ is through the written word of God in the Holy Scriptures. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, the scriptures are good for teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness. As we read, study, and meditate upon the scriptures, we will learn and adopt the principles of Christian living. Secondly, it is to receive the truth of God through the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Whether through someone else or a personal conversation with God, the words of Christ can be spoken to us directly. This is a little more challenging because it takes time to distinguish the voice of the Holy Spirit from your voice. But once it happens, you can hear and receive instruction from God. Through either method, discipleship happens when we don't just hear the word, but receive what we hear as our truth. Jesus stated in John chapter 8, verse 31, if we continue in his words, we become his disciples. This word for continue means we do not depart from his words. We shouldn't leave the comments where we heard them, but make them a part of our very existence. Finally, after we have received the words of Christ, we are given the Holy Spirit to serve as our guide in righteousness. He will tutor us in Christianity through spiritual conviction, bringing scriptures into our remembrance, giving us promptings or speaking through others. He will direct us on the godliest way to respond or act in every situation. As we follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit, we will act more like Jesus than our normal fleshly responses. As we adopt each of these elements, we will discover that we will learn more about Christ and eventually look more like Christ. The goal of discipleship is not only intellectual expansion, but life transformation. We are to know more about Jesus to look more like Jesus. God bless you.